somebody was asking me about Pure Land. Uh, they say traditionally Zen is a, a self power. I can make, I can become clear myself. And Pure Land, which I guess came from northern India and China, uh, and is in Korea too, is uh, other power. I call on somebody uh, to help me. Maybe that's just a way of thinking. Uh, somebody asked the sixth patriarch, uh, Zen and Pure Land, you know, are they the same or different? Something like that. And he said, if you think the Pure Land is somewhere outside you, then they're different. But if you realize the Pure Land is your uh, original, the essence of your mind, then they're the same. So of course we just see uh, if we can realize our true nature. Everybody understands it a little bit. Sometimes we understand it too much. But if we can have some faith in it, if we can have some experience, I guess you say experience. I don't know what that means exactly. You just, uh, you know. Uh, and that becomes stronger and stronger. Then uh, that's, that's Buddha's teaching. That's the true way. Then what do we do? So uh, for some of the people who don't get to hear the Dharma talks here too often, uh, we talk about three things being very important. Attaining our substance, realizing our original substance is before thinking, and then, you know, we demonstrate it like that. Guji raised one finger, MJ Sansa, ha! Doksan hit people, Sung Sansanim hit the floor. So we hit the floor. That time, no inside, no outside, no subject, no object. Inside and outside become one. Then we say you're clear like space. You know, not making any opposites thinking. Then our body and mind function as a mirror, just reflects. So we always say red comes red, white comes white, simple reflect. My experience is many people, uh, you know, most of the people uh, come to Buddhism, at least in, in, with Sung San Sanim and uh, the various people he met as he traveled around the world, they're pretty smart. So they can understand, ah, oh, my true nature is before thinking, you know. Maybe even have some faith in it from some basic experience doesn't have to be boom, just one of the things that caused the most experience for me is just seeing ideas I had disappear. Like I just made that up myself. So what's underneath that? Pure and clear, that's all. But the next step's very important, which is if we keep that point even for one moment, no inside, no outside, then, like I said, our mind and body just reflect. You and anything become one. So seeing the floor, just yellow. But you don't even need to say the word. That's already too much. Yeah, sometimes in situations, we use words to communicate. That's important. But the experience of yellow is before the word yellow. And it seems to me a lot of people don't really see. We go past that experience or really hear just sound or smell. We go past it so quickly into our thinking about it, our opinions. I like, I don't like, I want something, I don't want something. It's too easy, it's stupid, or whatever. We can't just be filled by these pure experiences. Of course, when we're kids, we are, some of the time. I mean, do you remember, like, I just remember the sky is like so blue, you know, or the pain is really pain, you know, it really hurts. You know how little kids, it's always funny, like little kids, one year old, two years old, even if they're in a busy train station or 
a uh, airport, if they're upset, they just start screaming, you know? And every once in a while, adults do the same thing, and then everybody, oh, that person's crazy. Weren't, weren't we flying someplace one time, you and I, and Juan Hoxanin? I think so. And the flight got delayed about seven hours, and this one woman was going berserk, and she was yelling at the, uh, the, the uh, check-in people, and she just couldn't let go. And everybody else in the flight started filming it, you know? <laughs> We were like doing yoga and making funny positions and stuff. Okay, you know, it's a bummer. Who wants to wait seven hours for their plane to Malaysia or something? You know, it's, only, it's not even that. We had to wait longer than the flight itself would take. But this lady just lost it. And it wasn't even as pure as a little kid. You know, little kids, when they, they do it, they really do it. <laughs> How can babies cry so loud? They do it from like the bottom of their feet. So even Jesus said, you must become like children, you know? I think it's that point, that completeness of becoming one with situations, which we call truth, just reflecting this changing world moment to moment. Now, usually, we all attach to it. You know, like the Western, uh, uh, the, the Gucci San Juan, you know, it's too spicy, it's too spicy, it's too spicy, and then you got a solution. You know, you figured out a solution. Everybody's like that. Uh, it used to be when Koreans went to the West, they went crazy if they couldn't get rice. Well, especially the Europeans went crazy in Korea when they couldn't get good bread or cheese. Americans were used to crummy bread, you know. <laughs> but but I remember that was like the big thing, good bread. Uh, one time, uh, three of the the Polish, uh, the the uh, 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 Gucci San Juan came back to Huagesa after the three month retreat at Shinwansa, which is on the other side of this mountain. And uh, one of the Polish monks told me that a Bolsonin came in and said to him, you know, like oh, you know, you guys just did a three-month retreat. What do you miss? What do you need? And he said, bang, because all the monks stayed in one small room. But she heard, bang. So next day, 40 loaves of bread showed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, all this interesting stuff happens. But we don't just see, just hear. And be filled by it. Not like consciously, oh, I finally feel full, but just in an everyday life way where little kids can be. Yeah, their karma breaks through quite often too. In America, our summer vacation from school, in primary school, Chodong Hakyo, was three months. We had very short winter, three month summer vacation. I think in Korea it's like six weeks, six weeks. Well, when I was a little kid, three months was like forever. You know, it just never would end. It would never end. It was so exciting to get out of school for summer vacation. You know, the rest of the year didn't even exist. And then suddenly the day before school, I'd remember thinking when I was about eight, what happened? It's like, where did it go? It was forever, and now it's like nothing, <laughs> you know? So that experience of time and color and sound and smell and taste, very strong when we're young, but it gets weaker and weaker and weaker because we think a lot. We think so much, and this thinking you know, it goes into our cells, and we don't, we can't appreciate this moment of reflection. Now, of course, the everyday world's changing all the time. That causes a lot of suffering if we attach to it. If we get this point, then we get, and make it stronger, stronger, then we don't attach as much. Maybe one day you don't attach at all. And that's like the mirror. 
the mirror doesn't attach to anything. You know, your face appears, the mirror reflects it, my face appears. Mirror doesn't say, I don't like your face, I like her face. You know, it just reflects what's ever in front of it. And our body mind can do that. So we try, try, try. We keep a big, big question. We pay attention to everything, what's experiencing, and whatever word you want to use, don't know, or you hit the floor in your mind, or what, don't hold on to it. And we can't make ourselves doing that just by wanting to. You know, it's like your muscles don't get bigger just by wanting them bigger. You have to work out, you have to practice. So we have this great retreat. You guys have done retreats before, or you're coming here maybe for the first time. You know, we have to do it. We have to try again and again and again. And that builds up a certain energy, a certain momentum. Uh, maybe we feel terrible, but one moment, oh my, yellow. <laughs> That's all, yellow. And then we say we get this moment's truth, then one more step is correct function. How do we use this moment to, uh, to help? And the Diamond Sutra explains true helping has no thought of that. You know, the true Bodhisattva doesn't think about Hama Bodhisattva. It just becomes like right now, the wind blows, the tree moves. It just becomes natural. I think that's why Sung San Sinim could be so amazing in everyday life situations because becoming one and this responding in a beneficial way became, he, he worked on that so long, it became so natural. So one time, I've mentioned this before for some people, uh, I was staying in Paris, France. We were making a Zen center there and Sansanim had invited a teacher uh, from a different school to uh, stay there as a guest master and she was teaching. And one day the three of us went out to lunch and you know, she was sitting there, Sung San Sanim was sitting here. And of course, you know, my job was sit there, eat lunch, shut up and you know, sort of take it all in or whatever. And um, uh, I remember De San Sanim was eating soup. Uh, oh, I was told my pronunciation's no good. I'll just try to change it to Kunsani because my Korean pronunciation is terrible, but my English pronunciation also of English isn't very good. Uh, like, it's terrible, not terrible. <laughs> That's in another an example. But um, I like terrible. But uh, this woman was saying, you know, oh, these, stu these French students are all junk. And I remember Kunsanim was eating the soup and totally natural, no hesitation. He just looked at her and he said, teaching means take junk, make a treasure. And he was eating. It was, it was total natural conversation to him. It wasn't like, oh, now I'll go back to eating. And I was sort of stunned and realized it only came out naturally because he had made his whole life that. He had been working on that his whole life. How to just see the treasure in each people, each person and touch them, you know? And we can do it and we all do sometimes. And how do we strengthen that? We have to understand ourselves more and more, which also means seeing our karma, seeing my body and mind habits and practicing chanting, bowing, sitting, working together, living together, staying here for a week together, eating together, that helps us see it, see all these little moments of what, uh, what our experience is, what I'm doing, what I'm making. So if there's no questions, then uh, good. Let's uh, keep a big question. You know, no question, big question is, uh, we can repeat something like, what am I, what am I, what, but it really, the real big question is without words. It's just the way we attend, the attention we have to what we're doing moment to moment. 
So whatever your practice is, do it. And do it through all the circumstances that we go through together this week and during this retreat and in, in a normal daily life too. And then our minds become bright and that's the way to help everyone. And then slowly we get actual wisdom to how to do that in uh, various situations. Okay, so you already know, we say only go straight, don't know, and moment to moment, follow the correct situation function relationship, and just do it. Okay, what happens now? Thank you very much.